Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Boone and this is Boone Slot Car Garage. And you might have noticed at the beginning of the video that the intros changed a little bit. So it's been a while, we needed to update that. So I went ahead and updated that. Plus, we went ahead and did this. And what this is, is a new updated version for the logo for the channel. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. But with that, now that we have our updated logo and different stuff like that, what the big plan is, is to go ahead and eventually start making some merchandise as far as t-shirts and maybe some coffee mugs and stuff like that. And I'm gonna twist it up a little bit, you know, might as well have fun with it, right? So yeah, kinda, kinda letting you guys know what, what might be uh, in store. But enough with that. Let's get back to what this video is going to be. So what we're going to be doing tonight <laughs> is we're going to go ahead and work on Deception Raceways. And Deception Raceways is the 132nd scale layout that I have. So what are we going to be doing on Deception Raceways tonight? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do this. And what this is, is vintage style uh, stadium lighting or track lighting. So. I need some more lights on the track. There's a lot of dark areas and stuff and we need to start building some lights. So what better way to do it than let's make a video, let's start building some lights, right? So tonight, that's what we're gonna be doing. So saying all that, go out, grab yourself a cup of Joe, maybe some popcorn and uh, let's do this. Okay, so first thing we need to do is get together all the material that we're gonna need. So I have everything laid out here on the table. And uh, first thing we need are the three different sizes of brass tubing. So this large one right here is 11 30 seconds, or you could consider it the 8.73 millimeter brass tube. The little middle guy here is the 7 30 seconds or the 5.56 millimeter brass tube. And then this little tiny guy right here is the 3 30 seconds and that is the 2.38 millimeter brass tube. So we need the three different sizes of brass tubing. Then we also need our brass upholstery washers and these guys are the number eight upholstery and they're also brass, so they're real easy to solder. And then we also need our LEDs that we're gonna use. And these are the three, uh, <laughs> three millimeter LED uh, pigtails and they have the diode and everything is already wired into it. So kind of takes a lot of the struggle out of that, getting that all one extra, one, one step we can skip, right? So. These are already all pre-wired. So those are the three millimeter LEDs. Need a little extra wire. And then we also need our control unit as far as the power source for our lighting. So I'm gonna be using the EVE model for this, uh, for this adventure. So there we go. We got all our material. Oh, and one other thing. We also have our paint. <laughs> Since I'm not gonna leave it in brass, I wanna go ahead and paint it. And this is just a Rust-Oleum style bomb can metallic aluminum. And that'll, uh, that'll do us as far as our material. So when we come back, let's go ahead and start building this. All right, we're back. And what do we need to do? Well, we need to figure out the height of the light pole, okay? So, I mean, you can just go ahead and just measure one out. Say you get out here on your layout and you start measuring around and go, yeah, that's about how high I want it. Or you could go ahead and use something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys something. And I actually use this quite a bit. It, it really helps. I used it in the last video that I did with the HO when I was setting elevations around the track and I had to come up with correct measurements for the corkscrew for Laguna Seca. 
and it was at 59 feet. So I had to figure out what it was in 164 scale for 59 feet. And this is the tool that I use. Now, I'll go ahead and put the link up for this calculator so you have it, but this is a really cool tool for modeling. And what you can see at the top here is it says 132nd, okay? So you can go ahead and put in there, say 164th for HO or 124th or 143rd. I mean, it's you can calculate anything with this. It's really cool. So I'm gonna do, say, a real life light pole at a 25 foot light pole now some of the big light poles and stuff are a lot bigger than that but um i was kind of looking around on the layout and the area that i want to put this at a uh, 25 foot light pole will will work good for me so what i did is go ahead and put 25 over here and then since i'm in the u.s you know we're going by standard I went ahead and put feet. Now, if you're in the UK or down in Australia, uh, you can go ahead and hit this and it opens it up to all sorts of different type of measurements. So you can use it in centimeters, meters. I mean, you can even figure out your kilometers or your miles of your track on this thing. Kind of cool. So go ahead and put in whatever the uh, um, measurement is that you want to use. And then I'll go ahead and put that over. And then what it will do is spit out a number, okay? But what you need to do down here is then put in the uh, type of measurement that you're going to use. So I'm going to use centimeters to go ahead and measure this out. So put in centimeters. And again, you can open this up. So if it opens there, so it opens up, say you wanna use millimeters. Well, you could do in millimeters or you could do in inches. So we're gonna use centimeters. So once I put in the 25, it spits out a number of 23.8125 centimeters. So there's the height that I'm gonna go ahead and cut this at, and that'll give me my, uh, my height of right around 25 feet. So kind of a cool tool. Definitely can use that not only on, say this type of stuff that we're doing here, but say if you're building uh, a building, you know, <laughs> you're actually building a structure and you need to get as far as the height of a doorway or a window or the actual footprint. You know, you want to build something that's pretty close to scale. This will be your best friend. <laughs> it really will. Saves you a lot of pencil and, and uh, paper time trying to figure out math when you can just plug it in here and boom, it gives it to you. So just wanted to go ahead and point that out. So now that we have that, what we need to do is grab our big, our big pipe here this is the uh oh shoot what is this the 11 30 seconds pipe so what i'm gonna do with this is measure it out at 23.8 so i'm probably gonna bring it up to 24 centimeters but there's something i need to take in consideration with this is when i do mount it on my layout since i have polystyrene that's down here on the base i'm not going to set this thing just right on the surface okay i'm going to need to uh, make a hole so this goes down so it hits the wood of the layout so it's a lot you know it, it has some structure to it you know it has an anchoring point if i set it up on top it's not going to be that strong so i definitely want to get it down into the meat that's down in there so my uh area that i'm going to go ahead and put this at is going to be right around five centimeters uh, deep. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and, and measure out the five centimeters. So let's see here, I'll go five to this point. So then I have that marked at five centimeters. Now I'm gonna use that mark and then measure it out. So we're at 23.8, so I might as well measure this at 24. So I'll come over here measured at 24 and now from here to here i have my 25 foot light pole so i'm gonna go ahead and cut that out and when we come back we'll go ahead and uh take this to our next step so now we have our pole cut to length so i just used a hacksaw and chopped off one side of it to length that we need now the next thing we need to do is figure out our upper supports now 
if you've seen some of my other videos, you know I love to use pictures. And here is a picture of a vintage style uh, stadium light. So you can see up on top how it has the three rows and there's four lights per row. So there's 12 lights total. And then it comes down you see these cross supports that come through there. So if I come over, you can kind of see how that is. This is a, a 3D rendering that I found on the internet. So kind of cool. I mean, you go in there, find all sorts of different renderings. And I mean, pictures speak a thousand words when it comes to trying to figure stuff out. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get these, these um, three poles figured out as far as length goes so we can get those cut next. So let me go ahead and I'll set this back down. And what I've done is I've taken my upholstery washers and set them down on my cutting, um, my plastic cutting pad. And on those, it has a grid. So you can utilize your grid as far as placement and measurement and everything else. So went ahead and placed those down to the, you know, the approximate way that I want my lights to, to set up up on top like it is on the picture. Now what we need to do is figure out our distance of our pipes. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut three of them at a length of right around, what is this? Uh, seven and a half centimeters. So I'm gonna cut this pipe right here, which is the, oh, the seven thirty seconds or the 5.56 millimeter brass tube. And I'm gonna cut three of these at the seven and a half centimeters. Now, this little grid right here, seven and a half centimeters by five, what, five and a half centimeters tall. Let me just double check that. Yep, five and a half centimeters tall. And that works out for a pretty good sized grid of lights up on top. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut three of these and we come back, I'll have that cut, we'll have this cut, and then what we need to do is make our light fixtures. And uh, yeah, we can start kind of getting this thing rough right, together. So I have my little guys cut here and you can see if I set it down onto our uh, upholstery washers, how it kind of sets out that grid. So let me see if I can just kind of take this, kind of tilt it up a little bit. So if I take this and just put it down there, we can see how that grid kind of sets up. So if I take my pipe and I set my pipe over the top of this, kind of gives you an idea of how that's going to look. So that's going to look pretty cool. So the next thing that I need to do now that I have my piping all or my tube all cut is that I need to go ahead and create light fixtures with these guys. Now, um, what I'm gonna use for that is a hammer and two different types of, of uh, punches for it. And I showed how to do this on, uh, on a video called how to build a log light pole. And I'll go ahead and put that little link up there so you can reference to to do this if, if you did not see that, that video yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these into light fixtures. And when we come back, we can go ahead and uh, get this thing start to get assembled. All right, so now I've made my light fixture. So there it is, looks like a, a floodlight. If we go ahead and take our three millimeter LED and we stick it in the middle of this, you can see how that looks. So that's going to look pretty cool the way that's going to be shining up. So that's how you make these. And again, reference back to that other video that I did and it'll show you exactly how to make these. So now that I have my pile of light fixtures here and you'll notice I'm making a light with 12 floodlights on it. Obviously, you can make it any any way you want. If, if you want to do just a strand of three or two, or maybe you want to get nuts and go for 24. I mean, uh, it's whatever your creative mind wants to go ahead and do. But tonight, we're building one with 12 light fixtures. So now that I have those established, I have my pole cut and I have my cross beams cut. What I need to do is find the center point of these cross beams. And what these are gonna be is 
our lights are gonna hang off like so onto them, all right? So what we need to do is go ahead and find the center. Now, you can go ahead and measure it out. You go ahead and use the grid that's on here and uh, just find the center point, go ahead and mark that out. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab my Dremel and I'm gonna get a grinding head to it. So let me find my grinding head real quick. So let me rummage through my box of Dremel bits. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use this little guy right here, okay? And what this is gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this, grind down in the inside of that so then I have a better surface to, uh, to solder onto. What the idea is, is that if we take our pipe, we groove this in the middle, then we can go ahead and put that up onto our, our upright pipe and it'll set into it a little bit. It'll just give us more surface area that when we go to go ahead and solder it, it's anchored better, okay? If it's sitting right up on top, you put solder on it, it's gonna be a little bit not as, uh, not as strong. And then the other thing is, it's gonna look better if we just inset it a little bit, set right in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and grind these areas out. When we come back, we'll go ahead and get these two pieces put together. Okay, so now I have these guys ground in the middle there. And what that'll do, that little notch, is when we go ahead and put on our pipe, it'll just help set right into it so we can solder it down. Now, <clears throat> when you're doing these, when you're grinding them, they get really hot. So I recommend maybe grabbing some gloves so you don't scorch your fingertips trying to grab a hold of this and grind it down. But <laughs> enough with that. So now what we need to do is go ahead and figure out the heights that we're going to have our pipes going across. And with the, the type of upholstery washer that I'm using, it came up with a height of right around uh, 1.5 centimeters or one and a half centimeters. So what I did was go ahead and make a line, you know, first right off the top. So this first bar is gonna sit right on the very top of our, of our pole. Okay, so it's gonna sit right up there. Now, measuring off of that down 1.5, put another mark and then down 1.5. So what we're gonna do is put this one here and then this one will be down below that and then right here. And then we'll get our spacing as far as what we need. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and solder these guys together and make sure that you know, everything's flat and they're all flush and uh, they aren't all skewed off to the side. So I'll go ahead and get that soldered in and we come back, we'll have our cross supports on our pole and we can start installing our light fixtures. All right, so now we have it all soldered together. It looks pretty good. It's starting to look like a light fixture, isn't it? So one little thing though, when you're soldering it, be careful not to burn your th your finger because it hurts. But ugh, enough with that. But what we need to do now is to go ahead and um, take our, our light fixtures that we made out of the washers and go ahead and solder them, solder them up on here. So how I'm going to go ahead and do that is I'm gonna go ahead and take the, the small tube that we have left. And this is the... Uh, the 3 30 seconds or the 2.38 millimeter tubing. And what I've done is just go ahead and cut it to a short length that will go from the top rung and then hang out down at the bottom. Now, depending on how far you want it to hang out, you know, is, is all up to you. Um, what I like to do is go ahead and get this all soldered on and then I'll come back once I get these soldered onto the area where they sit, and then I'll take my Dremel and just cut this off to the actual length that I want it. Now, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take these, and I'll just go ahead and solder them right here on the side. So if we come back, I'll have these rods 
soldered down for our support. All right, so we're back. Now we have those supports all soldered in. So they're all soldered in there. Now we need to do is take our little light basket, our light fixture, and just go ahead and solder this into place. Now, the nice thing about having these supports is that you can bank this at an angle so it's shooting down, not straight out. And it gives you, you know, some support to go ahead and solder that on. Otherwise, it's drifting around. It's, it's, it's challenging. <laughs> it's real challenging. So if we go ahead and figure out the direction you want that down, you see I have that pointed down. That way it's gonna be down towards the track, okay? If it's out like straight, it's just gonna be shooting straight out. So we wanna make sure that it's, it's shooting down. Now your, your sides, you could have down here an angle. So they're shooting away from, you know, away from your light fixture. But uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and solder these guys all on, put that down solder those on so when we come back we'll have all our light fixtures soldered onto our pole okay so at this point now i have my light fixtures all soldered into place and you can see in the sideways like that they're pointing down and out and there it's actually starting to look like something <laughs> so now at this point down here at the bottom, we want to go ahead and slice these off so we can trim them up a little bit on both sides. So what I'm going to do now is just take my Dremel and I'm just going to go ahead and cut these across so they're nice and square and they, um, they match each side. And then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and drill a hole in this. So let me go ahead and cut these and we come back, we'll get a hole drilled in our pipe. So went ahead and I cut those off square down at the bottom and you can tell I have a light that's sitting in here. Well, we need to go ahead and drill a hole in our pipe here or in the tube so that our wires can then be put through that hole and then fish down through the, through the base, okay? So what we need to do is kind of find a central area that a hole is gonna work to go ahead and route all our wires into. Now, let's see here, let me pull this guy out. So you can see, if we come all the way, let's go all the way down here at the bottom. So let me go ahead and I'll string this guy in. Okay, so we get that, fish him through, get the bulb right up in here. Okay, so there he is. He's sitting in there, he's ready to light up the track. So what we need to do is figure this out. So what I'm thinking is that to go ahead and put a hole about centrally located. That way we can fish all these different wires into this area and then bring it down, okay? So you wouldn't wanna to try to bring it up through the top because then all of a sudden you're taking your wires and you're going all the way over and you're gonna have a loom that's going to be over the top of this. So we want to go ahead and try to do one centrally located in the middle that we can go ahead and get all the wires to and route it in such a way where, you know, it looks like something that's somewhat presentable on the back side. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut a hole right into this area. So I'm going to take my drill, drill it out. Now you want to take in consideration, let me get this guy out, that we're going to have well, I'm going to have 12. So I have 12 lights of these wires. So if, if I grab, let's see here. I'll kind of give an idea. Here's three different lights. Okay. Three different lights that are all tangled up. But I think this will this will work. So we have that. And we have this. So you can see just with with three lights, how big our loom is gonna get. So we're gonna need, you know, somewhat of a good size hole on the back side. Now, you're not wanting to drill a hole directly down into it where it's up above. We're gonna want this to get routed out. So on both sides, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. That way when we route the, the uh, wires down to it, they're not having to come down and then out again and through. 
this back side, if we have an opening, what we can do is then bring the wires down and everything can just kind of flow into it without too much of a jumble of wires on the back side. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get a hole and drill a hole in here. And then I'm gonna take my Dremel and again, let me grab my, uh, and take one of these diamond bits. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and open that hole up, okay? So I'm gonna open it up and open it up on either side. So it's kind of an oval shape. So then that way we have plenty of area to go ahead and route the wires into. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we come back, we'll have our drill, hole drilled and uh, we'll start doing something else to the back side of this. All right, so you see on the back side of that, I opened that up pretty good. Now we have plenty of room to go ahead and route the wires and everything else. So at this point, what we wanna do, well, let me, let me go ahead and point this out. If you're wanting to just go ahead and make the light without the other stuff that I have planned on the back side, you're, you're right there, okay? The only thing that would be lacking would be to go ahead and cap off your holes up above here and the holes on the side and then just go ahead and paint it. So at this point, if you didn't want to do the rest of it, you could go ahead and take it from here. But I plan on making an access ladder and a little bit of a catwalk up here on the upper part. So it's going to look pretty cool. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and start cutting out our structure for a catwalk across here. So when we come back, we'll go ahead and start okay. that. So the plan now is we're gonna go ahead and make a catwalk up here on top, and then we're gonna have a ladder that comes down to the base. So the way I'm gonna construct that is gonna be out of the 332nds brass tube or the 2.38 millimeter brass tube, this stuff, the tiny stuff. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is, well, if we get our, our handy dandy figure, and we set him up in here, we know that it doesn't need to be too wide, right? It just needs to be enough that a guy can get up here and change the lights if he needs to. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take this rod and I'm just gonna measure out probably, uh, let's see here. How, how deep do we wanna make it? Probably, oh, probably about uh, one and a half centimeters. So what I'm going to do is take this and I'm going to put a bend on it at one and a half centimeters, bring it around and then do the same over on here and then trim it up so it's nice and flush and then go ahead and solder that into place. So when I come back, I'll have that piece all soldered in. All right. So now we have our base structure for the catwalk right across here. Now we need to do is go ahead and figure out the ladder that goes down. Now. Again, I showed you guys this at the uh, beginning of the video, and a rung on a ladder is around 12 inches, one foot. So if we just go ahead and put in the 132nd, we put in the one foot, that is equivalent to 0.9525 centimeters. So more or less, what we can do is make our ladder at one centimeter apart for each one of the rungs for the ladder you know, be within scale. So I just want to go ahead and show this again on, on how, you know, how you can use this. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that off. But what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take, you know, the small wall again, and I'm going to go ahead and cut this off so that I have, um, well, let's see here, probably about a two centimeter overlap up on top of this. And then that's where I'm going to run my railing across here but I need to get the ladder in first so then I can go ahead and make my railing based off of the the ladder that the top uh, sides of the ladder so being that this is going to go into the layout down at the bottom I don't need my ladder to come all the way down here I can go ahead and make it fall short so if we just go ahead and measure this out and we compensate for two centimeters up on the top of it. And to bring that down, I'm gonna make a ladder that's gonna be around 18 centimeters, okay? So what I'm gonna do is cut my sides at 
18 centimeters and then mark these out as far as uh, one centimeter apart and then go ahead and solder in all the rungs for my ladder. When we come back, we'll have that set, you know, the ladder all built. And what we'll need to do is just put a couple supports in through here to go ahead and hang on to the ladder so it supports it. So I'm gonna go and build myself a ladder and when I come back, we'll go ahead and get it installed. All right, so now I went ahead and made our ladder and the rungs are one centimeter apart from each other. And then they're actually the, the two rails going up are one centimeter apart as well. So yeah, it turned out pretty cool. And then I went ahead and put two supports onto it. And what we need to do now is take our light post and just go ahead and solder this into place. So what we'll have is a excess ladder on the back side of it. So once we get that on, then what we can do is go ahead up above and make some railings. And then we just got to put a, oh, what do you call that? <laughs> we got to put a platform up here so they can stand on something. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and just solder this in. So we'll have our ladder up the back. And then what we need to do is just finish off our railings up here. And then it's ready for, oh, one other thing. We're going to have to go ahead and cap off these holes that we, we have at the end of the pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this all on. And we come back, we'll finish off our railing up above here. We'll do our platform and we'll cap off our okay. holes. So I went ahead, got the ladder all on there. Now what we need to do is just go ahead and figure off our, uh, our railing. So I'm just going to go ahead and bend that around and solder this in on both sides here and might actually put an upright on either corner as well. So when we come back, I'll go ahead and I'll have this soldered in, okay, on both sides and have an upright and uh, yeah, we're, we're really starting to get close okay. now. So I went ahead and I got the railing on back here, put in some little corner pieces and at this point, now it's just a matter of let's go around, let's touch up all of our different solder joints and stuff like that, kind of get the slag off of it so it's all nice and smooth. And now, once we get that done, now we just need to come in and cover up these holes. So what I'm going to do there is actually fill them up with solder and just kind of smooth them out and cap them off. So all these three here, the three here, and the one up above here, I'm just going to go ahead and fill with solder and then smooth it out. So when we come back, I'll have that, and then we need to go ahead and make our fencing on our catwalk. All right, so I have these all capped off now, all the way around, and now what we wanna do is I wanna go ahead and put some screen on our railings. So what I have is some of this metal mesh, and if you've seen the video where I do the crash fence, and I'll go ahead and post that video up, you know, this is the same mesh that I use for that. And uh, I just picked this up at a local hardware store that we have at Home Depot, and uh, I'll go ahead and put the, <laughs> put the description of what this stuff is. Comes in a big roll. But it'll work perfect, works perfect like chain link fence and whatnot, but also work really good for making just kind of a screen up in the inside of that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to fit on both sides, and then we'll glue that in with some super glue. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now we have our fencing in there, and yeah, it looks pretty cool. So we kind of just finishes it off, gives it that little extra little bit. And I just went ahead and put super glue and hold it in with super glue. And then I used a little bit of the, the uh, quick dry and it just, you know, it's nice. You can go ahead and set it in there, squirt it with that, and it just sets it instantly. So there's that and we got everything cleaned up. And now we're ready to go ahead and squirt this thing with some paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and just go ahead and hit it with this. And this is the metallic aluminum. And uh, I might just go ahead and give this a light scuff. So I'm going to take some uh, Scotch-Brite and just go ahead and scuff it up a little bit so it has some good adhesion. And then plus wipe it down with alcohol 
so that um, we can get all the oils and stuff off of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a quick squirt of paint. And when we come back after it dries, we can go ahead and finish this up, get our wiring in it and uh, see if see how it looks. Okay, so I got it all painted and yeah, starting to look like something. Looks pretty cool. And the catwalk in the back and the ladder just kind of that extra little something for your your light fixture so what we're going to go ahead and do now is we need to go ahead and start wiring this so what i'm going to use is just a three millimeter led bulb and this has all been pre-wired has the diode right up here the diode right up here at the top and so what i need to do now is just go ahead and start snaking these through so let's get this guy out of the way so we'll just start up here on the corner and what we want to do is just go ahead and bring this on through like so and bring it right up into it like that okay so then it's right up in there you can see it and what we're going to do is go ahead and take a little bit of super glue on this and we're just going to go ahead and super glue this into place in the inside so and pull this out and I have my super glue and then my quick dry so what I'm gonna do here grab this give it a few little shakes and then we'll get this right up on the bulb here down here at the base and then just set this into place so once you get it right where you want to have it, like so, make sure your bulb is centered. So I'm just going to support that. And now, let's see here. Support the bulb. Go ahead and take our little quick dry. Hit it. And there it is. And so there's one bulb in. So what I'm going to do is just go through and put all my bulbs in. And then when we come back, we'll start figuring out these wires. Okay, so now I got all my bulbs in there and everything's glued in. And we got this mess of wires hanging out the back. Kind of looks like some kind of punk rock alien, you know. Ooh. <laughs> so now what we got is the fun job of sorting wires and getting them all put together so i'm just going to go ahead and put the negative with the negative and the positive with the positive and uh, it's going to take a little while so i'll go ahead and do that when we come back i'll have the wire sorted and uh yeah <laughs> then we can go ahead and route this area as far as routing our wires and get them fed down through the tube but first off i need to go ahead and sort all these guys out and uh get them all tied together okay so now i have my wires all stripped and i have them separate as far as positive and negative and all tied together so those are done we can go ahead and set those off like this now we need to get our wire that we're actually going to hook up to our power source for our lighting on the layout. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take this and then run it up through the middle here. And then when it comes up to that area that we cut that window right here in the middle, if you can see it through all that, what we're gonna do is go ahead and run this up and it's, oh, I went up too far. So then when it comes through here, just go ahead and grab that, snake it out, and then what we need to do is solder these guys together. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and snake my wire through. I'll get these all soldered together and uh, some shrink wrap on it. And then we need to go ahead and route our wire back down through the pipe. Okay, so now I have my wire soldered and I have my heat shrink on there. Now make sure when you, when you solder your wires, you get a real good bond, okay? Wrap that all around, get a nice bond in there so that when you go to pull these down, I mean, obviously I'm not gonna just yank them down from one side, I'm gonna push them down as well, but there is gonna be some tension on that joint. So you want a, a, good, a good solder job to, to hold everything into place. 
Second thing with this is the hole that we drilled down inside that we're actually putting our wires through. Make sure when you do that, that you deburr that hole. Take all the sharp edges off of it because you don't want it to cut into your wires, okay? Be kind of a heartbreak if you got all this far, didn't be deburr those, went to go ahead and pull your wires and you end up either cutting one of these wires or snapping it off. So just kind of a, a little hint as far as that goes. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and feed these down individually, one at a time, and uh, just take some time and do it. So when I come back, it, we won't have the, the black and white thing going on there. It kind of looks like Cruella de Vil <laughs> of 101 Dalmatians. But So I'll go ahead and get that fed down through, and when we come back, we won't have this rat's nest up on top. Okay, so now I have the wires pulled down and all the way down through. Now we need to do is on the end of these lights where the diode and stuff is at, we need to go ahead and get these in here and then just go ahead and bend them around and route these, these ends so that you can just kind of direct the wires. And as you're doing that, you're gonna end up with slack and just kind of keep on pulling it down and feeding those wires down through the hole in the inside there and just start to finish that off. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get these bent the rest of the way around and kind of get them routed down in this corner right here. You can kind of see where I routed those and uh, get this all kind of cleaned up. And when we come back, we can uh, start finishing up the upper area here as far as we need to put our platform still down at the bottom. And uh, yeah, but it's getting really close. All right. So I went in and I went ahead and routed my wires and got them kind of right here in the middle, okay? Now they kind of bunched up a little bit because you're gonna have some loose strands and some of them you're just not gonna be able to get down. So, in order to just finish it off that last little bit, what you can do is take some of the, the large tubing, the, uh, oh shoot, I forget the size of it. I'll post it up, but take some of the large tubing that we had that we made the actual, um, the main post that came up. Take a small portion and cut it off and then split it down the middle and what i've done is i've made a little finish plate okay so it's all rounded out so just split it and then widen it out so you kind of bring it like so and then what this is going to do is this is going to fit right down inside here let me just go ahead and fish it down over the top we can do is glue that into place and it works as a finishing plate that covers our wires the rest of the way so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this glued in and then just go ahead and I'm gonna paint this ahead of time so let's spray it with the aluminum that we sprayed everything else with and then bring it into here and then glue it down on top of those wires as a finish plate and then that'll straighten up everything and it makes it look a lot more tidy up on top. So when we come back, I'll have that in. And then what we need to do is put our base here for the catwalk. A little finish plate put in there and it's all painted out. Now, next thing we need to do is go ahead and address the floor of our catwalk up here. So now you could use, if you had some balsa, you could actually put some balsa, make you know, wood balsa planks up there if you wanted to do that. Or what I'm gonna use is the same material that I went ahead and made the chain link around the sides on this, and that's that metal mesh. So I have a little piece here that I cut out, and what I'm gonna do is just fit it on the underside of that, trim it all out, and then just go ahead and glue it into place with the super glue the same way that I glued these pieces in. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this to fit, just kind of get it right in there. And then we come back, all we gotta do is just some little finishing touches on this, maybe a little bit of weathering, and uh, it's ready to go plug in on the layout. All right, so now I got my bottom of the catwalk in there. If you look in there, yeah, looks pretty cool. So next thing what I wanna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take a black wash, and this is an acrylic wash, and I'm just gonna go over the top of this stuff. And 
what this is going to do is just kind of give it a little bit of weather. Plus, it's going to like on our on our screen here, if you go over the top of it, it's just going to kind of kind of blow it out. <laughs> there we go. But it's just going to kind of give a little bit more definition. So it doesn't all everything just washes into it, because if it's all bright silver like this, it's you're going to kind of lose some of the depth, almost like a snow blind. So I'm just gonna kind of go over this, hit some little areas with it, and the wash itself won't dry dark. It'll actually just kind of go into to puddles and stuff in there. And it just kind of give it a, a little bit of extra, just, just give a little extra character to it. Little, you know, just kind of tone down that silver a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let it all uh, dry up and we come back it should be ready to go on the layout. All right, so my black wash is all dried and it's kind of cool. I mean, just it just kind of tones it down a little bit and just kind of gives a little bit of a wear to it, you know? A lot of times on the, the light poles, they'll have just a little bit of black around there, a little bit of grime, and it just kind of completes that look to it. So now, since it's all dry, I'm gonna go find a home for this on the layout and we come back, uh, Let's go check it out. Another video complete and we added something else to Deception Raceway. So yeah, 
kind of a cool project. That stadium lighting, I mean, it, it, it looks really cool. And it works. I mean, it really illuminates that corner and everything else. Works really, really good. So, definitely a project you might want to try out for your own layout. And, yeah, kind of cool. But, <laughs> saying all that, if you like this video, like it, share it with others, and subscribe to my channel. And also, we have this, which is our Facebook group, and that, which is the Instagram page. Facebook group, come on over to check that out. So, what happens is I get to share stuff, you guys get to share stuff, and it's kind of cool. You know, it's kind of a round robin type of stuff. I love to see all the projects and everything else, the different layouts you guys are building, the cars you guys are buying, stuff like that. I mean, it's really, really cool. Definitely a cool thing. So, come on over, check these things out. But, we're also, for next time on Boone Slot Car Garage, we're gonna be back here at Deception Raceways. And what we're gonna be doing is, well, we're gonna build something, right? So, if you remember a while ago, I received a package from the UK from the guys over at Magnetic Racing. So, Ian and Doug went ahead and they sent me a bunch of stuff. Now, a couple of those items, are for Deception Raceways. A majority of it is gonna be for the HO layout, but since we're gonna be doing this one, Deception, we need to go ahead and build one of those. So, next video is that I'm gonna go ahead and grab something out of the box and we're gonna build it for Deception Raceways. But also, in that box, I received three extra items, and those extra items were the Firestone Gantry that we made a while back. Now, remember, I went ahead and created them two different ways. The way that it was in the kit, and then I did a modified version. Well, the guys over there, Ian and Doug, went ahead and saw the way that I modified and said, you know what? It wouldn't take much to go ahead and just kind of update the kit a little bit so you can build it both ways. So, cool! You can build it both ways now. Now that is the kit that I have, and I have three of them. So, I don't need them, you guys do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a giveaway, and we're gonna give away all three of those gantries. So, you might wanna stick around and check out the next video that's coming up. Now, I will go through the nuts and bolts of everything that how we're gonna go ahead and give those away. So. Ah, now that we got that all done and everything else, next time at Boone Soccer Garage, well, I filled you in on what was going to happen there. So, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>